Yeah, okay, so it's been a little while since we've done a video on STRs, short-term rentals. You know, like vacation homes. Anyway, there's a good reason behind that because there hasn't really been anything to talk about lately, or at least anything good. And I'm not exaggerating because something happened and we need to talk about it. And much like the rest of the country, we've been regulated. Regulators! Mount up. It was a clear black night, a clear white moon, Warren G was on the streets trying to console. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Dad jokes aside. Gosh, dad jokes. What happened? I used to be young and hip and cool, and then just like that, one day, dad jokes. Can't even help myself. I just spew corny jokes. Okay, yes, STRs have come under fire recently, and so how can you, as a local or not local investor, still be a part of the Airbnb game here? After all, it is well known that Bend is a super popular tourist and vacation destination, accounting for almost 20,000 people a day on average. Well, we have the rules, the regulations, and some of the other areas that you could potentially invest in coming right up. Stay tuned. Okay, first let's talk about what happened. It used to be difficult to find a home or like a residential, you know, single family home that you could turn into an STR. You see, it couldn't be within 250 feet of another short term rental. Then there was all kinds of permitting hoops that you had to jump through. And then you also had to qualify via the HOA if there was an HOA that allowed it in the first place. It was genuinely challenging. And then of course, the city had all these permitting fees that measure up to, you know, the total sum of thousands of dollars. And it was just hard enough and just painful enough to really keep away not so serious investors. And those were the good old days. Because back at the end of 2022, the Bend City Council actually pushed through new rules that actually changed the 250 foot distance rule to 500 feet. And because of that minor tweak, there are virtually no homes left that are eligible to be turned into STRs. The map viewer used to previously find properties that were eligible is now all red. Red's bad, yellow is good. The other big issue that investors face is even when they find an STR to buy, when it's sold, the new owner has to requalify under the 500 foot rule. Well, it originally qualified under the 250 foot rule and because it's pretty dense everywhere, almost none of them will qualify under the new 500 foot rule. This ultimately means that over time, as investors sell off their rental properties, we are gonna see fewer and fewer STRs in the Bend community. Good news for grumpy neighbors, bad news for potential investors. Okay, so what can you do? Well, first of all, there are still some options in town. They are very, very few and far between, especially given this super ultra low inventory that we're now seeing, but they do exist. Careful research and patience is key. Oh, and probably having the City of Bend Planning Department's phone number on speed dial. That's gonna be key too. Okay, so the only way to find out if an existing STR under the 250 foot rule will re-qualify under the 500 foot rule if you were gonna buy a property that's already licensed is literally to call the city of Bend and see if it will re-qualify. So again, you, you're gonna have to call the planning department. So like I said, you have to be ultra diligent and be willing to put in the work to find your next STR. Next, consider that it doesn't have to be in Bend proper. There are plenty of communities just outside of that Bend city limit, communities that don't have any restrictions on them at all. It's, it's county. In fact, there aren't any restrictions yet. Not that there are any proposed that I'm aware of, just, you know, someday somebody's gonna say, hey, you know, <laughs> it always happens. My point is that Deschutes River Woods is still an option. And there are plenty of other small acreages around the outside of Bend that could also work as an option. Then of course, there's also Redmond Sisters Sun River. But yes, I know, more so than ever, people just wanna be in Bend. I get that. But let's take a look at these other communities first and we'll get back to more Bend options in a minute, okay? Hey, if you're liking this content, consider subscribing to the channel. We talk about Bend and Central Oregon every single week in this channel. We talk about things like developments, communities, things to do here, and yes, 
real estate. Be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell notification. Okay, moving on, Sun River. Well, duh, yeah, Sun River. Gosh, it's such a great place to go and visit. The insane amenities, just everything that you wanna do on a summer vacation is there. The river, the golf, the nature, the biking, the shopping. I mean, honestly, it was built for vacation homes. You must know that. Sisters. Sisters is a fantastic community. It just has a ton going on for it. The rules for getting an STR in Sisters are very similar to the way the Benz rules used to be with a 250 foot separation rule. Now there are fewer homes in Sisters, so finding one can be a challenge. I mean, finding a home at all in Sisters is a challenge. I mean, there's only like 3,000 people that live there, so there's just fewer homes to choose from. So you can't be picky. But what Sisters has is a thriving community, great shopping, fantastic amenities, and even closer access to some great outdoor activities as well. Ski Hoodoo is just up the road. You can fish the Metolius, access to national forests, water sports at Subtle Lake, whatever. Sisters is a great home base for a ton of activities. And it's only 20 minutes to bend anyway. I mean, depending on where you're from, not, not here of course, depending if you're from somewhere else. I mean, it takes 20 minutes to, just to get to the freeway. Tell me I'm wrong. Redmond. I've heard stories that it's good. I can see numbers on air DNA, etc. But I will admit that I don't actually have a client that I've sold an Airbnb to in or an STR to in Redmond, nor do I know of anybody that's doing STR in Redmond personally. But it has to be good. The price point to purchase is lower. There are far fewer neighborhoods with HOAs that would prohibit STRs, and there are no current city regulations against vacation rentals. Now, it's the same as with the county. You have to actually have a business license and you have to uh, pay your transient room tax fees uh, every quarter, but the city doesn't have rules against STRs per se. Again, <laughs> yet. I imagine Redmond would be a great place to start an STR. It's still close to a ton of Central Oregon amenities. Actually, it could even be considered more centrally located if some of those activities included, you know, going to Lake Billy Chinook or, you know, perhaps fishing along the middle section of the Deschutes River or, um, or definitely Smith Rock. And really, every visit to Central Oregon should include a trip to Smith Rock. It's fantastic. Redmond downtown area is becoming really popular with tons of attractions, shopping. General Duffy's watering hole is becoming very, very popular. They're attracting some pretty big names as far as uh, music uh, artists go. They've also got the best food trucks. Then there's also the Deschutes County Fairgrounds that are in Redmond. Then as a bonus, Bend is really still only 17 to 20 minutes away. And then of course you've got the Redmond Airport. So it really all adds up to being a really great and easy area to invest in. But okay, all right, okay. I hear you, all you wanna do is visit and stay in Bend. Uh, you know, because Bend is all that and a bag of chips. I, I get it. There are options, resort options, that is. Condos, townhouses, cabins. For example, Seventh Mountain Resort, uh, Mount Vashville Village, uh, Tethro. There are even some condo units right in town that can be STR, regardless of their proximity to other STRs. The atrium is one of those such examples. I believe it's nine, maybe it's 12 units, condo units, overlooking the old mill with stunning spectacular westerly views that are stunning modern contemporary condos. Very sleek. The major trade-off here is that while you can STR some of these places, the prices of said condos and cabins and townhouses can sometimes make the income production difficult to pencil. Now, I don't wanna put hard numbers behind this because I do want this video to be fairly evergreen and I don't wanna to have to have anybody in a couple of years from now tell me that I kind of misled them. But for example, if you were to buy one of the Tethro cabins, they are actually deed restricted that they must be available to rent short-term rental for 38 weeks out of the year. They're actually deed restricted, which is great because they will never not be a short-term rental. The problem is, is that right now they don't really rent out for enough, you know, to really make as much money as you would on say another STR potential income opportunity in town. Basically, I'm trying to be very intentionally vague here, but if you're looking for a vacation home and you wanna offset some of that mortgage or some of that expense by renting it out part of the time, and then you can come visit whenever you want, 
this might be a really great option. But if you're looking for a vacation rental as a true investment, as a cash cow, because some of them are, this isn't it. And many of these resort style options aren't it either. Like everything else, investing in real estate can be extremely rewarding, but is no means guaranteed. I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a realtor. Real tour. Two syllables, not three. But if you are looking to move, invest in, know someone who's looking to buy or sell in the area, my team and I would love to be your real estate resource of choice. So thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe, hit the little bell notification, smash the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to all of our other social channels, and we will see you over on the next video. Cheers. Oh, that was terrible. Uh.